Hello, hello. Good morning. Gio here. Again, beautiful Friday morning in Toronto. And I just had the opportunity to sit down and record again. Um, and I'm just really loving the flow of this geocast, what we call it. Um, because I felt like before there was all this pressure um, to create content when, you know, you're trying to do it or, you know, and then again, it was really getting clear on like why even creating content in the first place. Cause I spent some time, like, you know, trying to build a YouTube channel and trying to build an Instagram f- following. And, um, now I'm just doing it when I feel like it, when I feel like I have some time, clear my mind, share a few things. So, um, thank you for all those who are listening. And also thank you for everyone who's been sending out messages on Instagram, Elemental Geo, um, through Facebook or, email or whatever i really really appreciate the feedback and i realized like my intention wasn't to build anything you know i was kind of misguided and i think that's a good rule um in life when a lot of people including myself start doing things on autopilot and when i just change the intention hey i just want to share staying connected with people that i meet from all over the world and not put too much pressure and it just has such a better flow and i reflected on like all the other things in my life that I kind of was doing for the wrong reasons. And you all, I always started finding this resistance and you start paying attention to how you feel about things, not, you know, forcing things through with your mind. It starts getting really easy to determine what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. Um, and so now I try to listen to that a little bit more as far as what I really want to do and why, you know, um, the what versus the why, <laughs> which is also coming up. Um, and it's very interesting to start changing perspective into these subtle ways or differences of, of perception, looking at things. And it can be applied anywhere. You know, for example, some of the online businesses that we're working on, um, you start analyzing, you know, what people do. And you get all these analytics like, hey, on this page, they're dropping off. This page, they're clicking. This page, you're doing that. So you get a really good snapshot of what's going on. But then you really want to ask the question, why? So why are people not interested in taking an online breathwork course or... Um, buying a subscription or sharing with their friends um, and maybe it's because maybe you're not communicating the value properly or you're not connecting with them in a way that's meaningful and so I try to now apply that to more areas of my life it's like now what am I doing it's like why am I doing it um, what's the real reason behind it and am I being influenced or coerced into doing something because I think that's the right thing to do or because the media is telling me to do it, or because um, all my friends and family are doing it. And I'm sure just by mentioning that, you may have felt over the last two years, you know, you've been felt, you may have felt like you want to say something, but you couldn't, or you wanted to do something, but you were afraid. And I think we're in a time in humanity where it's really asking people to dig deep. The challenges are getting more and more real, whether it's the way you spend every day of your life, what you do for a living, how you show up, how you share what you truly feel. Um, and it's sad that we live in this cancel culture these days. Um, but I think we're, we're hitting a turning point where um, we need to have these these conversations about the why, you know, um, and there's some interesting, a lot of interesting things that have happened in the last couple of weeks that I'm kind of scratching my head at. Um, so I got a few things. I don't know where to start. So we'll probably just jump all over the place as usual in these geocasts. Um, but the first thing that has been coming up a lot is like, you know, we're planning to go back to Costa Rica in September and, you know, found someone to, you know, house sit for us while we're gone here in Toronto. And, you know, big question is like, where's home for you guys now? And which, which do you like better? And, you know, the mind starts to think of all the checklists of, like, what, what's good about Costa Rica? What's good about Toronto? And then I was trying to think, like, where do I feel the best? And it's a hard one because, again, the pros and cons of being here is, like, you have all the amenities in Toronto. But when you're in Costa Rica, you realize, hey, do I really need a lot of those things? Do I really need an Amazon to be able to drop off something in my house every single day? And, you know, or, like, a Starbucks or a mall or, you know, flat roads. And, of course, some of them are good nice um, but do you really need those kind of things um and optimally optimally i think the best is you know having the contrast of you know all the things you appreciate in one place and then you go to the other and you realize all the things you appreciate there um so i'm not sure where is home yet um but i think also like home is wherever you are when you feel like you're your true self and you can be in the present moment um that is home um 
So I'm just really, really playing with that. Excited to go back to Costa Rica. Um, and home, I think, is where you can build community, right? Um, feels at home. And I think we're we're building community in both places, really connecting with people, really showing up. And I think the best way to build community is to, like, give of yourself. You know, what 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 is special about you? What, what are the talents or gifts that you have? And even if you don't have it, how can you support other people? And how can you show up and volunteer or create value? Um... And, you know, it's something that I've been working on is like, where do I create value for others, but not of necessity because I want them to like me? Um, And this is where, you know, it really gets tricky. It's like, why am I doing these things that I do? Why do I um, want to help others? Is it because I'm seeking validation or it's because I really just love connecting with people? And when I'm in service, I feel like I'm present and... um, you know, not trying to overthink it and being transactional, which is, you know, where I was for a long time, which is like, hey, like, even though I'm doing good things, am I hoping for something in return? Or am I just really doing something good? And one of the universal laws that I've learned in my life is the more you give without expectation, the more you receive in ways that you couldn't even imagine in the first place. So things will come from different people from different areas that will come to support you when you need it and not trying to worry about it or think about it or forcing it to happen. Um, and it brings up a story of like, you know, another thing that I've been working on personally is like this need to always be working and keeping myself busy. And I think I just have an overactive mind and there's a lot of studies now, the default mode network. And when we're focused on a task, the default mode network sort of slows down and you get into that present moment, you get into flow states. And when you're not focusing your awareness, it starts to get active and that's where you start to ruminate and, um, you know, the ego, <laughs> so they say that's where the, the ego lies, is in that default mode network. And you start judging yourself, or you start contemplating, or you start ruminating and worrying about the past and the future and what you're supposed to do. And it, it, nowadays, it's very challenging because there's so much uncertainty. And what the ego wants to do is just keep you in a place of certainty, where, you know, even though things may not be good, it's uh, something you recognize and you can handle. And on the other side, um, where the ego doesn't know, you know, it could be a lot worse. We'd rather stay in discomfort here um, and um, stay in discomfort here rather than explore the unknown. So again, things I've been, been thinking about, and, you know, it came very apparent, um, the what, and the secret is to trying to figure out the why, and that's what I'm kind of diving deeper into. But one good example is, you know, the last summer days, there's another one coming up in the next couple of weeks where we get to go into nature for a couple of days. Um, this music and just connect with people. And this is one of my favorite events here in the Toronto area. But last time I got there, it was kind of like, you know, I'm there with the family and I got a few days just to relax. And, you know, day one, you know, they, they've been trying to put together this amazing campsite and they've only had a few weeks to do it and there's all this work and I see them huddling up all the workers around the campfire it's like hey we got all this stuff to do and here I go volunteer you know more time away from the family more wanting to just help and do things and um I felt good about it and you know we go off and start raking a, a path and you know creating areas for more campsites to get set up and uh, at some point, I must have raked a wasp nest or hornet's nest. And all of a sudden, I'm covered in wasps, like head to toe. And luckily, a few minutes before that, I was getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. I've never been so grateful to be eaten alive by mosquitoes. And this goes back to the um, surrender experiment and not trying to make conclusions about things that happen and determining whether they're good or bad. It's just to see what how things unfold and to know that you know, what may be perceived as something bad in the moment actually could be something that can be shifting your direction in life onto a different path that can be much better for you. And sometimes you need that jolt um, to have more awareness that, hey, you know, maybe this path isn't working for me after all. So I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes and I'm I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to my my tent and get a sweater um, because I'm getting eaten alive. And so I put this sweater on and I and I put the hoodie over my head and I tightened it up real tight so none of the mosquitoes can get in. And if I didn't have that, I would have probably got 
these things all over my head, my neck, um, my body, because they were all over me, and they were trying to get in. You can see them trying to jam their stingers through my pants, or through, and I was lucky I was wearing pants, too, or my shirt, but there was one area, and these guys are smart, right around above my shoes and below my pants, where I got maybe like 10 or 15 stings, and you know, it was like a madman running to the forest, threw my glasses off, trying to swat these bees away, so I think the bees won round one, um, and it was such an intense experience. Yeah, it hurt, but it was kind of like waking me up, like feeling alive, you know, this adrenaline flowing. And I think the, the stings are anti-inflammatory too. Um, and then I just got to reflect on like, okay, yeah, I probably disturbed those bees and probably deserved it. Um, but it was like, it was a sign from, I guess, the universe. It's like, what are you doing, man? Why are you working so hard? You should just be relaxing. Now's your time to relax and slow down and spend time with your family and be in nature and you don't have to work. So that's what happened. And then the insight started comes. So why did that happen? And more than why did that happen is like, why can I not just say, hey, I don't want to do this or, hey, um, I'm going to take this one off and I'm just going to relax. And that's kind of what I'm I'm digging into myself. That's another layer, and, you know, through all this personal development work, there's layers upon layers of self-discovery that you find. And sometimes there's very obvious things you find early on, whether you're doing plant medicine, um, whether you're doing plant medicine or self-work or breath work. But then you got to try to figure out, like, why am I doing that? Like, what is the reason? What is the belief that's driving me to need to do more work? And I've sort of talked about this in some other podcasts. And, you know, thinking it's, like, showing value to make sure I have friends so I don't feel alone. But I think there's even a deeper layer that I may be avoiding something. Because maybe when I'm idle, my mind just gets too busy. And I have to deal with my thoughts. So that's the new one that I'm exploring to try and see, like, is there something there that I've been avoiding my whole life? Because from as soon as I can remember, I've always tried to be busy. And when we talk about integration, you know, and I see a lot of people struggle, including myself sometimes, when we have these realizations that we don't do the work to reprogram the subconscious mind, to let it know that, hey, it's okay to rest. Hey, it's every day saying that mantra. It's like, hey, I have this program of a fear of being alone, a fear of being unworthy. And then the opposite, finding the opposite to be true and letting yourself know like, hey, like I don't need to always be running on autopilot to try to avoid this discomfort that lies within the ego. And so something must have happened when I was small. Maybe just, you know, being in a trip when you're, when you're a newborn and no one being there and trying to cry for attention and being loud and, you know, someone to come to, to you to soothe you. Maybe set a pattern of like, hey, I need to make myself seen and provide value and have people. Um, so the good news is it can be reprogrammed and uh, take some work. And so, you know, all these things that start happening and things that happen in your life, it's really important to um, have more self-awareness and just have more reflection and try to sort of figure out what's at the root of the why that you do things and not so much what you do. First, it's identifying the pattern, but then the pattern will start leading you back towards the reasons why. Like, what are these core beliefs? Um, and so I find that very, very, very interesting and something that I've been working on. Um, and a great way to kind of get out of the mind, I've found, um, and this is another question people ask, is like, hey, these practices, like the ice bath or breath work or even calming your breath down when you feel like you're having anxiety, you know, I find that, that is it like a Band-Aid, you know, and it's interesting because there's even this new device that I met a guy um, down in Costa Rica. He's the founder of the Leaf, which is like a real time HRV monitor. What it does is you wear it, it's like strapped to your chest uh, right where your heart is. And when your HRV drops, it buzzes you. And, you know, one thing I notice is that when I focus on meditation, being the present moment, I can boost my HRV. But when I'm running on autopilot, especially at night, my HRV drops. And it just shows that, like, my mind is in this stress state of always thinking and um, just bringing me to this place. And I'm really trying to get to the bottom of what's at that root of why on autopilot, um, when I'm not focusing on being present and meditating, that the HRV drops. Um, so back to my point is that these tools are amazing um, for coping with symptoms, for bringing yourself back into the present moment and allowing yourself to find that kind of balanced state ice bath brings you right out of your mind it's kind of like a reset and so is the breath work and it doesn't always address what that root is so what's the root of that anxiety what's the root of that stress or those thoughts is going to keep coming and now we have these tools to kind of like balance them out almost like western medicines like hey you have a symptom take this pill 
Um, but what are we doing to get to the root? And so we're working on that in our breath work, elementalism.com. We have these mind work tracks. And I work with my amazing partner, Ty Gibson, founder of the Personal Development School. And she's just an expert on subconscious reprogramming. Um, and so I think it's it's a combination of both. It's really trying to dig deep to find what the root of these issues are and how the body is trying to get the mind's attention through the heart, through the stressors and trying to bring your awareness back to how do we make this change long-term and permanent and really shift our perception, shift that lens that we've created for ourselves through the ego or whatever you want to call it. And I think the ego is just a layer of the mind. It's a protection that's designed um, to keep you safe. So things happen when we're a kid. It's like, okay, we got to make a program. We don't want to feel like this. Okay, so what do we do? We put barriers up. If something says something hurtful. Okay, so now we're going to avoid those situations at all costs. Or, um, you know, you go to hug your mom as a kid and she's like, hey, I don't want to hug right now. Maybe she's having a bad day. Maybe, you know, who knows what's going on. But our mind is like, oh, that rejection hurts so much. I'm not going to show love to anyone because I'm afraid of feeling hurt back in return. It's interesting how the mind works. And so the ego is there. It's your amigo. And when you can start really understanding it and changing it and rewriting those programs, um, you can create these long lasting shifts. So if, if, you know, this is a shameless plug here, but the mind work tracks and elementalrhythm.com are amazing or any of the courses on personal development school um, we found can go a long way to helping shift those things in a beautiful way. Um, but some of the things that work and I'm so grateful for is having a sauna here at home now, um, having an ice bath here at my house, um, and just doing breath work and, and breathing through your nose versus mouth breathing and practicing acute intermittent hypoxia, which is a fancy name for the Wim Hof method where you're, you know, you're, um, increasing CO2, decreasing CO2, changing the pH in your blood and all these things. And what I think happens as it works over time is all these small practices help to make space and clear the mind a little bit so that you can have these deeper moments of introspection and start to see things a little more clearly and start to actually feel your intuition. Because intuition is always there. But if the mind is over busy, we're always in this stress state, we're always in this reactionary mode, fight or flight, need to survive, need to do this next thing. And when we want to tap into intuition, we've got to create space. And so now I like to meditate first thing in the morning for 20 minutes, just a silent meditation. I'm just focusing on my breath, quick ice bath, a little bit of a workout. Um, and I've just been reading about working out right after the ice bath because it gives you an amazing boost in adrenaline and testosterone for guys. Um, and then just being mindful throughout the day. And the leaf thing is really cool because when it buzzes me, instead of going straight into a breathing practice to change my heart rate, okay, what was I thinking about right now? What was going on in my mind? I'm really trying to uncover those patterns. Um, so yeah, and then you know I had this insight last summer days. Um, I don't know if we were in breath work or meditating, and it was just like you know, kind of like God, or the Creator was kind of laughing about how the mind was just created as this kind of joke to play on man to um, trick him, to trick us. You know, to overthink things, to be confused, to have to figure things out where, you know, a lot of unconscious or, um, I don't know if, if animals are unconscious, but, you know, something special about man's consciousness, but it's almost like this trick where it's like, hey, I'm going to make, I'm going to throw this in there just to really make things difficult and challenging. But the, the fun part is it's like a game where you kind of unravel it, um, like in that awesome sci-fi Westworld HBO, they show this map of the mind inside. It's like this maze inside your head trying to figure out what is real and what is not. As the world kind of devolves into this crazy time that we're in where, you know, it's hard to determine up from down and um, all these things that, you know, are happening in the media. And I'm trying to understand, you know, some things that really don't make sense to me and how coerced people are to do certain things. And, you know, forgive me for those out there, but this whole, like, kids could be animals and dogs and, you know, parents are asking to take their kids for a walk and to have a special place in the bathroom for them, like a litter box. It's just, like, crazy, like, confusing these kids at such a young age. I think it's gender and sex should be something that we kind of explore on our own and not kind of being indoctrinated into. And I know some people may be upset with that. So if you have more um, information on ways that I can understand better, I'd appreciate it. But I had a few friends who tried to explain it to me had really good debates. And I think what's important is when people are concerned about something or don't understand something, um, it's important not to get upset at them. It's important to try to, with an open heart, explain the point of view so that they can have understanding. Because you're never going to convince someone by telling them they're wrong and telling them they're an idiot or to try to convince them through force. Um, 
and you know like even what's going on in the states whether um you like or hate donald trump i think you know the politics around you know the left and right and this whole new green thing and yeah i think green energy is a great concept and i'm still not sure whether you know i know the climate is changing but is it man-made and all these things they're doing it's like okay this sounds great you know we need to reduce maybe we need to reduce carbon emissions i'm not even sure if that the science adds up because i've read both sides of it but you know forcing this quick shift and telling people they got to start eating bugs and um you know moving to cars i was looking into it's like wow you know this isn't, doesn't really make sense because most electricity is still made from coal or fossil fuels and you know nuclear is really clean and it's got a bad rap and it can provide a lot of energy and you know now people there's all these energy crisis and, and in europe they can't even heat their businesses because the cost of power is so high and um in california they gotta not they gotta turn off their electricity and can't charge their cars and there's all this chaos going on and you know it's trying to see like is there an agenda behind this and all these nitrogen kind of um requirements where farmers can't even afford to um plant their farms and they want to kill all these cattle and you know people are going to be starving to death yes we could eat a lot more yes a lot of food goes to waste and i think you know you get in the mind and, and maybe there's there's reasons behind it you know this global elites trying to destroy the middle class i think is one thing that could be true because you know always when you follow the money it creates a whole interesting new conversation to be had and you know when people don't have enough food or don't have enough energy what do they do they depend on someone else to provide it for them government give me a handout please i don't want to suffer and there's crazy things going along around the whole world right now but i think what it's going to do is going to shift people into more of an independence where we've kind of over the last 50 100 years have went away from being independent sources of our own energy of heating of maybe overconsumption because it's too easy of you know not being able to create our own food and not have a garden like my grandparents had a garden they would you know have a fireplace going and you know they're not fully independent but a lot more than we are now and maybe the shift is going to get people to say like hey wait a minute do i need to depend on others or can i create some more self-independence and try to take the whole politics out of it um, but there's a lot of politics involved in all the things that are kind of being pushed down our throats and tech and watching videos about how tiktok is trying to control our data and all of these other crazy things so i don't know where your mind is around all of these things but i think um going back to the original part of this podcast is like you can see what's happening but it's good to question the why you know why is it happening and even in your own like what are you what are you doing and why are you feeling this way and how are you responding and can we can we respond through love and open communication and creating new um ways to do things better and i agree less consumption is more we shouldn't have to drive all the time maybe having more localized less globalized economy but creating more independence where you know people can create more of the resources that we need rather than depending on handouts or big corporations because big corporations and this is a whole another conversation but you know the whole corporate model of capitalism and shareholders and this veil of them just wanting to invest to make money and the people who work in these companies are forced to perform or else they're gonna get fired creates this really crazy situation where profits come first and the outcome on people on health on the environment is just way in the back um shareholders are going to sell their stocks or they're going to fire the board of directors um so what are some solutions <laughs> what are some solutions that we can come up with so um yeah and then just want to give a shout out to joe rogan um he's an interesting guy um talking about um just having open conversations you know and i know he's got a lot of flack for some of the people he's got on and recently he's like hey you want this to stop vote republican i don't know if that's the answer i was a liberal my whole life um just really disappointed in the leadership in canada and trudeau um and not having these open kind of connective conversations where he's like just putting people against each other and anyone that doesn't follow their agenda is the enemy and is bad and um you know just recently you know someone was upset about freeland and you know when you really look at her in my opinion you know i, I just don't really get what they're trying to do and now all of this data is coming out where you know yeah you can have covid and you don't need to quarantine unless you're vaccinated or unless you're unvaccinated you have to stay 14 days and you know people are upset and lost their livelihoods couldn't go to work were forced out of it and now trudeau's saying hey people are mad because of climate change and that's why they're getting crazy and all this stuff i'm like wait a minute that has nothing to do with it 
people are upset because for two years their lives were turned upside down whether they got the shot or not and you know i know i know a lot of people who had injuries i know a lot of people who lost a lot of things because of that and it's like why are we not really talking about what's going on now i think you know whatever happened whatever the, the scare was about this thing no one knew what it was i was scared too and you know we all have to make decisions according to it but now we have two years of data that we can really say like hey like what is the best for everyone and how do we make better decisions moving forward? And I think that needs to be an open conversation for those who chose on both sides. It's like, hey, like, how can we meet in the middle and um, choose love and open conversation versus divisiveness and politics? And so back to Rogan, you know, he's bringing these really interesting guys like Aaron Rodgers. I highly recommend listening to that podcast, a superstar NFL player. Um, and he talks about, you know, how he was coerced and all of the backlash that he got. Um, then you have Zuckerberg, who is an interesting guy, and Joe Rogan. You know, you think, okay, you know, it's Joe Rogan. Where does he fit in all this? And then why is he bringing a guy like Zuckerberg on? And why is Zuckerberg saying the things he did? And how the narrative is starting to shift. And that's one word I encourage you guys to really start paying attention to. What is the narrative and why? Okay, when you start really seeing into this overall narrative where, you know, if you agree with one thing, you have to agree with other things. And you have to pick a side. And there's like, you know, if you had a, if you had like one of those blotter graphs where you put like, hey, if you believe in this, you can see everyone who believes in these things are on this side, everyone who believes in those things are this side. And I don't believe that's that's right or fair. I think there needs to be more of an open conversation where I can believe in this, and if I don't believe in the rest of the things that they support, I could believe in that. Um, you know, again, like, who knows what's going on around the world and what the intentions are, um, but there's some very obvious things that are happening that can be done a lot differently that I think. I just think more conversation needs to be around that. So I hope these views are not too polarizing for you guys. It comes with the best intentions and the intention to have more open conversation around them. So um, we'll leave it at that um, for now. Anyways, for today's geocast. Um, and the one thing that the last thing, I guess I had a conversation with a friend of mine, Evan, and we were talking about how I feel just so busy all the time and all these crazy opportunities that are coming for like new businesses. And as I mentioned earlier, it's like, why am I doing that? You know, I see what's happening. It's the why. He said, well, you just said, you know, maybe it's just all these things are coming your way and it's okay to say yes to them because they're more aligned with you. And I thought that made a lot of sense. And I was like, what if it's, I'm being presented with these amazing opportunities and they're so easy to say yes to, although maybe a lot more work, but maybe the opportunity is actually for me to be able to say no, for me to be able to say like, hey, like this is a good opportunity, but it's not aligned with what I really want when I really think about it. Because although I'd love to be involved in this project and it checks all the boxes, I don't have more time and it would be taken away from something else. And what I really want is to meditate every day on the beach in Costa Rica. I don't know how to do that yet because I still have a lot of work to do <laughs> and uh, bills to pay. But I'm setting that intention and working towards that. And a good way to get clear, another shameless plug, is to do the creative visioning process on Elemental Rhythm. Um, it's been uh, an exercise that's really helped me get clarity and to move um, in amazing ways and have all these amazing opportunities to live this crazy, awesome life right now. Um, but it started, didn't start like that two years ago, three years ago. I was just like stuck and wasn't sure what to do. And I think a lot of people going back to what I said earlier about being an autopilot, having all this stress and just being reactionary. If you don't get clear on where you want to go, it's gonna be very hard to get there. So focus on the why, not the what, um, be aware of the, what is happening, but start asking the question, the why and why you respond different ways and what you feel compelled to say versus what you really want and why. So love you guys. Thank you for listening. Gio here signing off. Um, love your feedback on this one. Um, so shoot me a message, leave a comment, say hi, and I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. And I'm at Elemental Geo on Instagram. It's probably the best way to connect with me. Have an awesome day. Peace.